And if your heart became closer to Allah as a result of something that happened to you, it was the biggest blessing. Whether positive or negative is besides the point. You know what that means? Some people get a lot of money, they get a good job, they have a lovely family, they forget Allah. That's a punishment. Why? It was something that looked positive, but it drove you away from Allah. It took you to the clubs and it took you to bad habits. If that's the case, it was a punishment. It's not a blessing. Something looking good was not a blessing because it drove you away from Allah. And on the other hand, something that was looking so bad, you lost your job, you lost your limbs, you had an accident, someone passed away, etc. If it made you come for salah and change your life, wallahi, that was a blessing from Allah. Anything that brings you close to Allah is a blessing. That's why sometimes a person gets sick. And he's a wealthy guy. And he says, I'm going to the doctor. Go to the doctor. Doctor says, we're doing all the tests. He said, yes, we're doing the tests. He gets the MRI and he gets this done and that done. Pause for a moment. May Allah grant shifa to all those who are sick and ill. Say, Amin. All those who are sick and ill. And may Allah protect us all. Amin. So he gets everything done and you know what? Uh, they don't know what's the story. Why? My brother, you don't do your salah on time. You're not worshipping Allah. You're far from Allah. You're engaged in sin and so on. And Allah loves you enough to make you realize that it's only in the hands of Allah. So you'll go to the doctors and you should. But if nothing happens, nothing comes out one after the other. And then the doctor tells you, you know what? You only have six months to live. A person who... That statement draws closer to Allah is actually blessed. And the other one will get frustrated, start questioning Allah. Why are you doing this to me? Why me? I've got little children. Forget about it. You're not the first person with little children who's got six months to live. And by the way, when they say six months to live, it's not even cast in stone. Because you might live for another 60 years. Who knows? It's only a statement. They might be totally wrong. They, how many people have left, for example, healthy and they've died without a problem? And how many people have been told 24 hours to go, 24 years still? They're saying, Salam alaikum, Buddha. <laughs> MashaAllah, may Allah grant us ease. Rely on Allah. If anything brings you closer to Allah, it is a blessing. So remember, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. These are great praises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hadith speaks about how subhanallah and alhamdulillah, they actually not only fill the scales, but they fill in reward the space between the, the skies and the earth. Just by saying subhanallah, alhamdulillah. Subhanallah. Get into the habit of praising Allah. كَلِمَتَانِ خَفِيفَتَانِ عَلَى اللِّسَانِ ثَقِيلَتَانِ فِي الْمِيزَانِ حَبِيبَتَانِ إِلَى الرَّحْمَانِ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَبِحَمْدِهِ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ الْعَظِيمِ Hadith, the last hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. The Prophet ﷺ says, there are two words that are very light on the tongue, very heavy on the scale, very loved by Allah. سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَبِحَمْدِهِ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ الْعَظِيمِ You praise Allah and glorify Allah the greatest. Allah says, just by saying that with your heart, it's something extremely heavy. Now this hadith in Sahih Muslim is telling you that that statement will fill between the earth and the skies in reward. How many times are you prepared to say it? Repeat it every day. Praise Allah. Praise Allah. الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Beautiful verses of the Qur'an where Allah praises the believers and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us very clearly that those are the ones who ponder over the greatness of Allah shown by the greatness of His creation. You know, when I say I'm looking forward to the day I'm going to meet with Allah, what is the reason? Because when I look at the scenery and the nature on one hand, when I look at the creation of Allah on the other hand, when I look at things that I like, when I look at things that I like, so much beauty and so much goodness, subhanallah, I think to myself, if I am intrigued and impressed by what Allah has made, 
Imagine how intrigued and impressed I'm going to be by meeting with Allah himself. You follow what I've just said? You see something nice. Hey, what do we say? MashaAllah. Brother, look down. MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> and then the guy will say, no, 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 no. I, I'm just saying, inshaAllah. SubhanAllah. May Allah grant us ease and goodness. May Allah make us people who are considerate. Amen. So I tell you something. Imagine if you see something that impresses you. When you see the creator of all of that. Oh, may Allah grant us the beauty and the sweetness of that day. So the hadith continues. And you know what it says. And I'm going to actually get right to the end of this hadith. Because I want to make a, a specific point. It says, Kullu nasi yaghdu. Everyone, all people, they get up in the morning. What do they do? They leave the house. You're going to go out, right? In the morning. Early morning, you get up. Fine. What happens on the day? What happens on the day? Allah says, during that day, every single day, everyone who gets up on the day and you've got life, you sell your soul. That's what you do. You sell yourself. كُلُّ النَّاسِ يَغْدُوا فَبَائِعُ النَّفْسَهُ فَمُعْتِقُهَا أَوْ مُوبِقُهَا You sell yourself. You work. You do something. You get up. What do you do? You do something. You're breathing, right? You either sell yourself in a way that you freed yourself from the fire or you have enslaved yourself, trapped yourself and imprisoned yourself into hellfire. It's your choice. Allah says every day you will get up. By the end of the day, you, on that day, you sold yourself. You did something. Whatever you did during the day, either freed you from hellfire or got you trapped into it. That's the hadith. Look at this. So why I am saying we need to go back to the words of the Prophet ﷺ. When you sleep in the, in the night, what's the dua? You say, Bismik Allahumma amutu wa ahya. Right? And the narration says, Allahumma bismika amutu wa ahya. Okay? Oh Allah, in your name, I, I die and I come alive. Do you know that sleep is actually considered the small minor death? Because according to the correct verses of the Quran, your soul and its attachment to the body in your sleep is not exactly as its attachment when you're awake. Allah says it in the Quran. Allahu yatawaffa al-anfusa hina mawtiha wallati lam tamut fi manamiha Allah takes the souls away two times. When a person dies, soul is gone. And when a person sleeps, the soul is taken. How? I don't know. But it's not exactly like that death. It's a smaller, minor death. Do you know why? Allah says... فَيُمْسِكُ الَّتِي قَضَى عَلَيْهَا الْمَوْتَ وَيُرْسِلُ الْأُخْرَى إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّى Allah says that when you're getting up in the morning, Allah sends back. In fact, He holds the souls of those who've passed away in their sleep. So it's gone. And if death is not written for you in your sleep, you know what He does? He actually sends that soul back for a period of time. Because you still have life written next to your name. That means when you're sleeping, your soul and its connection with the body is not the same as when you're awake. Now when you get up in the morning, Allah's just given you a new day. Allah has given you what? A new day. In order to prove yourself to get closer to Allah and when you go to sleep that next day, by that time you would have known, did I waste my day or did I use it correctly? If you wasted it, the loss is yours. فَكُلُّ النَّاسِ يَغْدُوا فَبَائِعُ النَّفْسَهُ فَمُعْتِقُهَا أَوْ مُوبِقُهَا Every single one of us, we will come out. We have to actually get up in the morning. We have to do something. We have to go out to achieve. We, we are breathing. We go to work. We do whatever through the day. You can never ever survive unless you get up out of your sleep and out of your bed. Because you need to eat. You need to go to the bathroom. And so on. And you know what? Allah says, well, during that day, you either sold your soul to the devil or to Allah. Basically, that's in a nutshell the meaning. It's up to you. Today, what am I doing? Wallahi, we're all lucky. We're fortunate. We are in the house of Allah. This 
If our intention is right, we are selling our souls for Allah. Right or wrong? Don't spoil it. Don't contaminate it. When you leave here, make sure that you've kept it that way. And Allah will grant you ease. Allah will grant you goodness. Care for people. Talk nicely to others. Respect people. Help others. What are you doing? You're selling your soul to Allah, for Allah, to Jannah, to paradise. The minute you head in the wrong direction, tell yourself, Allah gave me today, I might not have tomorrow. And let me not sell my soul to the wrong side. I'm walking away. The strongest of us is the one whose heart desires and has an urge to do that which is displeasing to Allah, but they abstain solely because they want to please Allah. You know, there was a certain brother who came to me. He said, you know, I used to be an alcoholic. Listen carefully because I'm sure we might relate to this with some people. I used to be an alcoholic. I quit it for the sake of Allah. But now I miss it. Subhanallah. Am I allowed to say this? He asks me. I say, brother, don't say it to anyone. There's no point. I'm glad you're being honest with me, but I can help you by telling you every time you miss something or you want to do something and you know that this is displeasing to Allah so you don't do it, Allah writes a reward for you. He writes a reward. Why? The hadith says it clearly. Man hamma bi sayyiatin. Whoever wants to commit a sin. Hey, I really want to do this. I really want to do this. Whether it's drugs or adultery or gambling or whatever else it may be. What I spoke about now, alcohol, whatever it may be. You want to do it because the, the, the shaitan within is driving your lust and desire towards it. And then the hadith says, if you stay away only because of Allah, he writes a reward for you. By doing what? I just sat and my brain was thinking. That's all. My brain was thinking. I almost got up, but I didn't. Allah says, for you is a sitting reward. Sitting reward. Because you quit something and you didn't do it for the pleasure of Allah. May Allah make us such that we are clean. We praise Allah often. And at the same time, when we sell our souls, we sell it for Allah, to Allah. And we earn Jannatul Firdaus by the mercy of Allah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.